proteins into your body in a way that your body can take it. But if you separate these things and there's no fiber, there's no buffer, there's no, nothing to really slow it down, then that protein hits your body and it's too much for your body to take, causing disease. Those oils, those fats hit your body, causing disease. Those sugars hit your body, hit your bloodstream, causing disease. Do you want to have cancer? Separate these foods out and eat high protein, high fat, high sugar. You will destroy your immune system and you will set a condition in your body that will cause cancer because when you separate the fiber from any one of these major food groups, you also cause a condition in the body where you have waste. In other words, your body can't correctly break down. Your body needs fiber to help digest and slow down the, the absorption of these different nutrients as well as clean out your body. If you eat pure starch and pure fat and pure protein, there's no fiber in that. No fiber, you have constipation. When I've dealt with cancer patients, the main thing that I usually try and do is cleanse their body of all these poisons, which is usually in the colon, and the blood. Now, why do you say I would do that? Let's look at the principle. In your Bible, in 1 Corinthians, notice what it says here, 1 Corinthians 6. We've looked at this before. Look at it again. 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. The first thing I do with people that I've dealt with cancer is you have to cleanse the body and hydrate them. Look at this cleansing. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. A very familiar text for if you've been here night after night. 1 Corinthians 6. And let's look at verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. How can we deal with all these various diseases? First, you have to understand that what you're eating and how you're eating it can verily be causing you to have cancer. Not only because the food itself may have cancer in it, but the way you're eating it or the nature of the food, how it's been processed, causes disease. It clogs the body. It destroys the immune system. It removes vitamins and minerals from your body. It slows down and breaks down your arteries so you cannot have circulation. All these things set the foundation for disease. In 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19, the Bible says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God where? Just in your body? Your body and your spirit, which are God's. So Christianity... And understand this body is a temple. It's not just dealing in the spiritual sense, just keeping your mind upon God per se, but the body as well as the spiritual nature must glorify God. Now you say, how can you glorify God? I could glorify God in my spiritual nature by praying and being spiritual or trying to do spiritual things, reading the word of God. But how can I glorify God in my body? Paul goes on to say this in 1 Corinthians 10. We looked at this before. 1 Corinthians 10 which is the reason why we have these meetings and we're talking about this from the Word of God, the Gospel of Health. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 31. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 31, the Bible says how we can glorify God in the spirit as well as the body. And this is why we're here to understand even this topic tonight. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. If you're there, say amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore ye, what? Eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to what? So is eating and drinking in our lifestyle a part of glorifying God? What does the Bible say right here? He said it definitely is, unless you don't believe in the word of God. He said it definitely is a part of glorifying God. And we just read in 1 Corinthians that holiness, keeping this temple holy, not defiling it, is contingent upon us glorifying God. So eating and drinking is a part of holiness. It does not endear us to God, but if we are God, shouldn't we obey him? Shouldn't we keep that which he has purchased with his blood in a helpful condition, especially if he's asked us to? He says that by glorifying him, you're showing a connection. You're showing you recognize that this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, also in the book of Corinthians, Paul talks about this holiness, which we found eating and drinking has something to do with. You may say, well, I've not always eaten eaten or drunk the way that glorified God. I've eaten or drank in a way that pleased myself. I've damaged my body. I've harmed my body. I may have cancer by the way I've eaten and drank. However, the Bible does not leave you there. He says that you, in, in this pursuit for recognizing your body as being holy, there is a way that you approach this attaining of holiness 
through obeying God, receiving Christ, the first law, not die at first, but the first law, receiving Christ, accepting his word, following his plan. There is a way, and the Bible says it's through cleansing ourselves, cleansing spiritually and physically. Let's look at that. Look at your Bible again in 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians 7 1, we are told that we are to cleanse ourselves spiritually and physically. That means bad habits. God must give us the victory over. God is going to show us and, and educate us in new habit patterns, holy habit patterns, holiness of life, healthful habits, a way to eat or drink or do whatever you do to God's glory and not to man's glory, that we might have life and have it more abundantly, as John 10.10 10 says. So in 1 Corinthians, I'm talking 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 7, pardon me, 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 1, let's read this text. This is the foundation. The glorifying God and the holiness that we need through diet, even it must be a starting with cleansing. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 says, Having therefore, are we there? Yeah. Say amen if you're there. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of what? The flesh and spirit. Not just the flesh, not just the spirit. The flesh and the spirit. The body and the spirit. Perfecting what? Holiness in the fear of God. Now, brothers and sisters, we need to cleanse ourselves. Do you know that if you have only eaten all your life white bread and white sugar and all these various different white products, soda, and all the various different things, rather than eating fruits and vegetables and various nuts and grains and whole grains, if you've been eating that way all your life, you've never really eaten this proper food, do you think that your body might be filled with poisons? Do you know that your body generally is? Ask any coroner. A coroner will tell you when they do an autopsy, it is rare to find people with healthy digestive organs. It is rare to find people without colons that are destroyed through years and years of abuse, livers that are destroyed, kidneys that are destroyed by eating high protein and fiberless foods and too much sugar. It is rare to find someone in health. However, we can know that God wants us to cleanse ourselves and he has a plan to do it. Hebrews 9.22 says all things are basically purged or cleansed by blood. Now, you may say, well, what are you talking about, getting a blood transfusion? No. We know that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin, but do you know that the same blood in our body that Leviticus 17, 11 says that the life is in, that same blood is the medium by which the body can be cleansed? If we can purify our blood, if we can put things in our blood that help purify the body, then we have started one way of cleansing the body and bringing back the body to a state of health. People that have cancer, generally their blood, their body, tends to be very toxic because they are generally constipated. Generally they go to, the, to relieve themselves in the restroom maybe sometimes once a week, maybe two times a week. Now they're eating generally three meals a day, seven days a week. Now three times seven is 21, right? So if you say three times seven is 21, so... That's 21 meals, and you go to the restroom to relieve yourself twice, that means that you have 19 meals that are still somewhere in here that have not left, or 19 uh, uh, eliminations that have not taken place that should have. There should be elimination for every meal, especially if you have fiber, but no fiber, poisons retained in the body, which poison the blood, and poison the tissues, which lower the immune system, and allow any cancer that might be in those foods or might be introduced in some other way to flourish, take over your body, and kill you. However, if we can cleanse the blood, we can start on a process of rebuilding the body. Most people are constipated, they're dehydrated. You can go right down the line. They're depressed, they don't know God, they get very little fresh air and take shallow breaths, they don't take deep breaths, especially not out in the open air, they don't exercise, they don't get any sunlight, they don't rest, they're up all night, sleep very little, they don't drink any water, mostly they drink sodas and coffee, they do whatever they want, whatever time they want, and their diet is high in fat, high in sugar, low in fiber, high in protein, which has caused most of the disease of this day. It, you can just go down this line and see why 
there is such a disease. But we need to purify the blood. To purify the blood, what I usually do is give people something to cleanse the entire body. It's a various ways you can do it. You can take a, a herbal tea to cleanse the colon. Do you know that the colon, if the colon is filled with uneliminated waste from years and years and years of eating all these various meals but not eliminating them, you need to put fiber in your diet. You could either, number one, take some kind of colon uh, program. And by the way, those that come Tuesday, remember we had those surveys, and I told you I'd give you a program. Everyone that's filled out one of those and won the program, Tuesday I'm returning your program. So a lot of the stuff I'm talking about tonight, if you are necessarily needing it, you're going to get that Tuesday when you come to the meeting. You have to eliminate that waste. You have to start eating fiber-rich foods. Now, you can take a herbal tea, aloe vera, aloe and senna, all these various different things that are out there. Even right now in the health food store, they have one okay tea that will help you a little bit called Smooth Move. There's various teas on the market now that will help your body start eliminating waste. But it's not going to happen unless you start drinking water. Don't just think you're going to take a herbal tea and that's going to be it. You need water. You need to take the poisons out and you need to bring hydration and pure water in. One of the greatest ways to do it, as far as bringing poison out, high fiber. Genesis 1.29, Genesis 3.18. Fruits, nuts, grains, vegetables, all these things. There's no major disease that's attributable to carrots. Now, how about red steak, red meat? Any disease attributable to red meat? High cholesterol? Yes. How about carrots, cucumbers, nuts, seeds? You don't find any. There's no major disease attributable to the diet that God has given us. But all these other foods that we're so fond of, they have major disease attributed to them. Science says the less you eat of animal products, meat, cheese, dairy, and the more you eat Genesis 129, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, the less your chance of cancer. So in other words, if you eat less of these animal foods and more fresh fruits and vegetables, grains, and so on, does your chance of cancer go down? Now, what if you ate exclusively fruits and vegetables and whole grains and seeds and peas and so on, and all these various different abundance of fruits that God has made? What if you ate exclusively of that? What would your chances of cancer be as far as from diet? What if when you find out that your chances of heart disease goes down when you eliminate meat, cheese, dairy, and eggs and start eating Genesis 129, the fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds? Science says this now. The Bible told you the, the principles of nutrition in Genesis 1, but science has come now and says, basically, the less you eat of animal foods and the more you eat of God's foods, your chance of heart disease go down. Why? Because the harmful cholesterol to your body is only found in animal products. Yes, cholesterol is found to a degree, or fats are found in corn and avocado and so on, but the harmful kind that are going, to, is going to destroy your arteries and cause heart disease are found in the fat of animals, whether it be fish, fowl, beast, whatever. Those are the sources of harmful cholesterol, which causes heart attack and stroke. If you want to have a heart attack and stroke, continue or increase your intake of animal foods. When I work with people, everyone that I've ever worked with, to a degree, I say, because some people, you meet some people that have really called you and they are at a point where they are on their last leg. And by the time that you're able to really get to them, you know, I, I really pray that people would really take heed to classes like this and start doing things. But the majority of the people that I've had an opportunity to deal with that took my main counsel, which is to eliminate animal products, survive. People that want to start their own program and, and try and use a little bit of what I give them and continue to eat all these animal products with the cholesterol and the fat, no fiber, which is there's no fiber in, in meat, no fiber in cheese, no fiber in eggs, and add that to some fruits and vegetables, they don't do very well. One of the easiest ways to let cancer thrive is to eat the major source of cancer and viral agents in the American diet, which is meat, cheese, eggs, dairy. Main source. If you want cancer, that's the easiest way to do it. Now you may say, well, I know people that have eaten this and eaten that, but they don't have cancer. Well, not everyone's body is the same. Some people go through these violent illnesses at certain times in life, and in the violent illness, guess what happens? Exactly what we're talking about now, cleansing. 
What do you mean? They throw up, they have diarrhea, they sweat, and they can't eat for days. How many know what I'm talking about? Anyone ever experienced that in the room? Nobody? Oh, I see some hands. You have violent illness, and when this violent illness throws off disease, it makes you go to the bathroom, you're going to go and have bad, bad diarrhea. You're going to the bathroom over and over and over again. You're throwing up. You're sweating. You can't eat. What happens? Your body has a chance to rest. Your immune system starts to rally now. All these wastes and poisons that are in your body start to leave. And you may feel weak for a time because you haven't eaten, but generally you feel a lot better when you get better. You've lost some weight. People say, man, you've really lost weight. Well, do you think what you flushed down the toilet, you really want to get back? Think about that. People say, oh man, you really lost weight. But they maybe didn't, didn't eat for a couple of days, but a couple of days, the most you're going to lose is excess body fat if you fasted for a couple of days. And everything that went into the toilet, do you really want it back? Now you think I'm, I'm making a joke. If you're losing weight because you have 10 pounds of unlimited waste in your colon, do you really want that back? No. Do you think that by retaining that, you're retaining health? When your colon reabsorbs the fluid off that waste into your bloodstream, causing headache, causing your skin to break out, causing forgetfulness, causing your lymphatic system to be so burdened and your immune system to be so suppressed that you cannot fight against cancer and other disease in your body, is that really benefiting you? No. Our foods can help us or hurt us. If you want to have a high fiber diet, you're going to remove the chance of cancer. You have to cleanse the blood, you have to cleanse the body. Drink water. We gave a handout before talking about water. Drink water. You need water. The more water you get into your body, hydrating your body, the more uh, agents you can use to cleanse the system, the better. Now you can use, like I said, aloe and senna or aloe vera juice or gel. All those are excellent to cleanse the system, cleanse the blood, but don't think that you're going to do that without increasing fiber in your diet, eating God's way, and you're going to have health. It's not going to work. The best you're going to do, if you keep on using all these different herbal cleansers, it gets to the point where your body can't work function without it. Your body was made to chew and digest and use fiber to keep you regular. If you do any other way for a long period of time, unnecessarily long period of time, you become dependent upon it. Which means God has designed that you have to follow his plan. Either you follow his plan and live, or you disobey and you die. Hydration, cleansing the body. When you cleanse the body, then we want to talk about some, we want to break into two sections and we go into our other areas. I want to deal with two different sections to try and simplify this because you want to build your nutrition, but I want to deal with two different things because the major cancers besides lung is breast and prostate. Breast and prostate. Let me start with, bre with prostate first. The prostate gland, many men are scared to death of having problems with. The prostate, glands, the prostate gland is very, very vital to your genitourinary health. A lot of times people have certain symptoms which show that they have something wrong with the prostate. It starts generally with prostate inflammation, and that inflammation, if it sets in, is not dealt with, is not removed by changing your health habits, then that constant inflammation will lead to a cancer generally over a period of time. There are some reasons why men have such a high preponderance of cancer. Now, we studied some of them, but I want to make it more clear. One of the major ones is, remember we talked about protein, how we separate the protein from your body regulators? Protein. Do you know the main way when I deal with all these various diseases, whether it's heart attack, stroke, and so on, the main way that I help people is by explaining this to them and showing them the need of all these foods, all these elements of food. However, if you know, let, let me give you an example. Let me put it this way. We see carbohydrates, fats, protein, and then vitamins, minerals, fiber. Is there in Western society, in America, a deficiency of carbohydrates? Any carbohydrate deficiencies out there? How about a fat deficiency? Everyone's running down and just completely just very, very skinny and they're decrepit and they can't even, they're bending over from uh, rickets. That's what you see most times, right? No, most people are overweight. 
So there's no deficiency here. So we, we don't need to look here for some lack in the American diet, per se. How about protein? We, anyone have a protein deficiency? Anyone ever seen someone with a protein deficiency? I've never, in 15 years of ministry and 15 years of dealing in health, especially from a Christian aspect, never met one person with a protein deficiency. Now it exists somewhere in Africa or some third world country where there's famine and so on. I, I probably there is, but there's none over here. So if we want to really regain our health, should we start looking at carbohydrates and fats and trying to build up our carbohydrates and fats? Build up our protein? No. The foods that we eat have too much protein, too much carbohydrate. If we want to have health, and the way that I've always had success is looking at category number three, increasing the amount of vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber in the diet. You increase the vitamins, minerals, and water, and fiber in the diet, health starts to spring back speedily. As soon as you start doing it, water, when we talked about hydration, water, hydration, fiber, cleansing, and then vitamins and minerals. One of the easiest ways I build up vitamins and minerals is by giving people the correct diet, along with all these, not just taking one, and also juices. There's various ways. How many have a juicer out there? Anyone have a juicer? How many use your juicer? Okay. Yeah, it's always a thousand hands, and then like one little guy in the back still uses his juicer. Juicing has become a craze, but juicing can help a depleted body. Juicing, again, is a refined food. I'm not saying this is something we should do all the time and consistently, but juicing can help get a lot of nutrition, a lot of vitamins and minerals into your body quickly, as opposed to trying to eat it, especially if you're racing against time with cancer. Carrot juice and a lot of different juices, and we have given you some recipes, build the blood very, very, very quickly. Now, there's other different food preparations you can make, but you cannot get around foods that God has made. Now, you can try and use vitamins if you want. That's up to you. However, understand that it's very difficult to find vitamins and minerals that are better than God's natural food. There are some preparations out there that are made based upon natural foods, like, say, wheatgrass, something like that. Those are pretty good. They're not as good as the pure thing, but because they're concentrated, they will help your body. But remember, you cannot get around eating the way God has said. Because again, say all you did was juice. I'm just going to juice, 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 juice. You will, to a degree, I've seen people to a degree, get much better. But after a while, after the medicinal effect has worn off your, of your body, now, because all you're taking is juice, how much fiber is in juice? So does that help your colon? Or to a degree, after a while, does it hurt your colon? Your colon needs fiber. Without fiber, it'll atrophy, and you will not be able to eliminate waste correctly. And now you have another problem that's going to cause another disease, even while taking juices. So, brothers and sisters, we've got to be balanced when we understand these principles. Prostate. Protein, excess protein, especially animal protein, is one of the main causes of prostate cancer. Now, you may say, well, people have been eating a lot of red meat and all these different beef and so on for years. Well, they have, but we want to talk about something in a minute that's going to explain why it's so explosive today as opposed to years ago. But first, let's look at animal products with prostate cancer. Red meat and all your proteins are generally acidic. Acidic. They have a lot of acids in it. As a matter of fact, a cow out grazing in the field, the average cow, an adult cow, can be anywhere from 600 to sometimes 800 pounds, unless they're really, really healthy and they're bigger. 600 to 800 pounds. Now, anyone out here 600 to 800 pounds? No, okay. Now, do you know that when that cow moves around on the, on the farm and so on, that as it moves, its muscles develop acid. Like when you work out, when you walk, you get acid in your muscles. Like say you do push-ups or whatever it may be, your muscles develop acid, and because of the acid, you can't do any more. Right? Lactic acid and various things in your muscles. Cows are the animals no different. When you eat a big hunk of flesh, which is what's steak and these various different, prime rib, rump roast, those things have the acids from that cow in it. That's what gives it the taste. The uric acid gives it the taste. The uric acid and the blood give the taste of the meat. These acids are the acids from an 800 pound cow. You've eaten a big section of that acid and the acid that you have developed during the day, walking, moving, exercising, if you do, plus the acid from this 
this hunk of flesh that has acid in it, you've taken it to your system now, and now your prostate, your urethra, your genital urinate tract men that was designed to eliminate the urine, because uric acid becomes urine when it's excreted, you know that, right? The uric acid that's in animal products, in meat and steak and so on, that is, that, if that was excreted from their body, it would become urine, uric urine. So as you eat that, now your body has to eliminate that cow's urine and your urine, and it's concentrated. That concentrated acidic nature causes, if you do it over and over again, three and four times going to the bathroom, or however many times you go to the bathroom a day to eliminate liquid waste, that irritates the genital urinary tract. It irritates the prostate. As that irritation happens over and over and over again, inflammation sets in. Now you say, how could irritation set in inflammation? Well, if you came up here, and for the next 10 minutes of my talking, I just rubbed your hand like that, just rubbed it. After a while, it's going to get irritated. It's going to get hot. And if I keep on doing it, the skin may break down and it may start to swell. Now, if you just put acids over your skin for a while, it'll do the same thing. As you eliminate this excess of acid from your body, especially from animal foods that are high in these acids, your genital urinary tract gets problem. You have sometimes infections, but most times you have this prostate inflammation that comes from this consistent elimination of these acids. As it becomes inflamed, it gets larger and larger, and sometimes men have symptoms like they feel like they have to get, the, get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, and then they have problems eliminating the urine because there is some blockage. You know, the, the, the passageway that passes through that the prostate closes down on, as it inflames, it gets closed down. It's hard to eliminate your urine. Sometimes I've worked with individuals and, and dealt with people that are having trouble eliminating. They have to go to the bathroom, but they cannot because the prostate is so swollen. Generally, what I do is I put them in a cyst bath or a hot bath. Put them in that hot bath or a whirlpool bath, and the heat will help pull the inflammation out of the area, out of the groin area, out of the prostate area, and allow them to eliminate their urine, which gets to my initial statement. One of the reasons why we see prostate inflammation and prostate cancer so prevalent today is because in the last <clears throat> 70, 80 years, 100 years, if you want to put it that way, we have shifted the way that we deal with bathing. A hundred years ago or more, or let's say 80 years ago, the average person did not have a shower. Not have a what? Now, how many when you were a child, you took a bath? How many took a bath every Sunday? You mean your mom bathed you more than that? Generally, you took a bath every night. And generally, years ago, all people had was bath. They didn't take showers. And when they got into that nice hot water and they sat in that hot water and put their lower extremities in that hot water, it helped all their viscera, all their internal organs. And even though they were eating wrong, eating the wrong kind of diet, by being in that bath, it caused them to sweat, it opened their pores, and it removed inflammation from, in women, the uterus, and men, the prostate, and it threw off disease to much later in life because they took those baths often. And if you did that, it would greatly lessen your chance of prostate problems even if you're eating wrong.